The west coast of Scotland contains some of the finest scenery in the whole of the UK. Some of the mountains and the landscapes here are just absolutely fantastic. And running right through this area is Scotland's best known and also Scotland's first official long distance trek. It is of course the wonderful West Highland Way. The trail runs for just under 100 miles, starting just north of Glasgow and finishing in Fort William. And we were hoping to undertake it in the middle of winter, not far from the shortest day of the year. Hey, good morning. Um, I may have done a wee intro, so you'll probably have guessed where I am. We're on the, the West Highland Way. And when I say we, I've got a companion who I'll introduce you to later on. But yeah, it's um, it's light now. We've been on the go. I left my house about 4 a.m. this morning. Uh, we're not far from the shortest day of the year. And we started hiking in the dark about half six from Mulgai. And we've been going for a wee while. You see the lovely colours of the sunrise just starting to show over this frozen loch. And to give you a wee bit of context, uh, you, you, I've already said it's the middle of the winter or the shortest day, so we're, we've got some challenges ahead. But some background context is the last two or three weeks in Scotland, it's been glorious weather, blue skies, um, really cold though. I think there was a temperature of about minus 19 recorded somewhere, and it's the coldest sort of winter spell we've had in about 10 years. And that broke yesterday, there was some rain came in, which fell as snow as you can see, so it's made the going this morning. It's also iced over in places, so it's a bit slushy and a bit icy. And the weather for the coming days is looking challenging. So if anything, this is going to be a bit of a... Yeah, we might not make it to the end, put it that way, but we'll do our best given the short days of... short hours of daylight and, uh, yeah, wintry, changeable weather. But anyway, for now, we're going to crack on a wee bit further and I'll report back in a wee while. Right, let's go. Oh, look at that view, you can see the highlands now. And the sun's come up and it's lighting up some of the camps he's behind us. And let me introduce you to Ray, you're probably have long time viewers of the channel know Ray. Hello folks. So I thought, uh, I've never done the West Highland Way, so I'm glad that I'm, I'm with an experienced hand. How many times have you done it? Uh, this will be my, this my third, fourth, third. Yeah. Third or fourth Done it a few so. times. And I'd always wanted to do it in winter, uh, just for something a bit different. Yeah. And yeah, everything kind of tied together. Now yeah. we could do it together. So. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just following Ray, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's been a bit, it's been okay. It's a bit icy, isn't it? A bit icy it and is, a bit yeah. slushy. And, um, yeah, we're going to head down to Drummond and um, we're, we're aiming to get to the banks of Loch Lomond, aren't we? Yeah, hopefully tonight, try and get a good push on today, uh, get camped along the side of Loch Lomond. Yeah, yeah, 20 and, miles today. Yeah, it's a long day. Yeah. We'll probably and, be walking in the dark at the other end as well. So. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem with this time of year. It's going to be a lot of head torch work. You know, theatres probably in the morning, theatres at night. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to say the least. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Right, well, we better get going then, eh? Yeah, None of this messing about the camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so at this point, spirits were quite high and the sun was shining, but it wasn't long before that sun disappeared and the shower started to move on. Little did we know that was the last of the sun that we'd see for the whole trip. I just wanted to stop here. There was a wee rainbow behind me, I'll cut to some footage of it. But yeah, this uh, this hill behind me is uh, Dumgoyne, and below it here, this white building, is Glengoyne Distillery. And it uh, it's the site of a famous episode of Still Game, where Jack and Victor go on their whiskey tour. I'm pretty sure that was filmed in Glengoyne. It's well worth going to watch it and checking it out. It's, uh, it's a very funny episode. They go round the tour and then sneak in the back of the next one and round and round and round and get lots of <laughs> free whiskey. It's a classic. But anyway, I'm going to shut up now, and uh, it's been raining a wee bit. Path's very, very icy, uh, so it's, 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 the going is a bit slower than we'd like, but yeah, we're going to head on and I'll report back a bit further on. Let's go. Right, I just got the wee camera out because my other camera isn't working, <laughs> which isn't great news. Yeah, we're um, heading to Balmaha, 
uh, we've kind of bypassed drumming and uh, yeah it's uphill now isn't it and another maybe another oh, hour's walking I don't know if you can see behind me it's turning more and more to snow again it's kind of uh, steadily getting bigger flakes it could be interesting interesting camp tonight if we can get down to uh, the side of Loch Lomond it'll be quite nice but anyway shall we barry on? Bar on let's go Ooh. As we headed off, the snow seemed to be setting in and getting heavier and heavier and those icy paths were now getting covered in a light layer of snow which made them even more treacherous. We really had to watch our footing at this point. You'll probably not see it but we can see uh, Loch Lomond over there now. <laughs> not before time. Still a few hours to go though. The next few hours were a bit of a trudge and we dropped down towards Balmaha where we stopped to go into the pub to have a pub meal which was lovely but after that and once we came out it was pitch black and down by the shore of the loch the snow had turned back to rain and although you can't see it here the, the path was still covered in, in ice some of that rain was freezing on, on impact which made it <laughs> treacherous once again. Anyway, to say that we were relieved to reach the intended camp spot would be an understatement. It was still raining, and now the issue was trying to find a pitch where the ground wasn't frozen solid and would take the pegs. Legs were tired, minds were tired, and I was just keen to get the tent up and snuggle into a nice cosy sleeping bag as soon as possible. Whew. Right, I've not really done many bits to camera, it's been a tough day, it's uh, literally rained all day or snowed <laughs> I think earlier on in the day we had a wee bit of sunshine but since then it's been it's been pretty tough Pretty tough going, a uh, long day, the underfoot conditions were pretty pretty bad, uh, ice, snow Just hard ground, uh, we really couldn't get into our stride so We stopped at Balmaha for a bite to eat at the pub there which is lovely And then it's been another couple of hours to get to the campsite and we're on the shores of Loch Lomond so I'm actually getting my heating up some water to put in a water bottle to try and keep myself warm tonight. But yeah, I'm going to report back tomorrow and get the camera out in the rain and uh, yeah, hope for a good night's sleep. So, report back tomorrow. I'm going to sleep well tonight, right? Day two. It's raining. Oh, it's six o'clock. Ah, oh, let's go. Don't know if you'll even be able to see me, but yeah, it's, it's just before seven now. I was chucking it down the rain when we woke up, so I don't think the rain's far away today. Time to get the tent down. And today we're walking along the side of Loch Lomond, which sounds like a trivial matter, but. Uh, Loch Lomond is a long, <laughs> long loch and uh, before coming on the trip I was kind of thinking the second part of this day today is going to be the hardest um, the trail apparently is quite quite tricky beyond Inversnade so yeah let's get the tent down I'll report you back to you when the, uh, hopefully when the sun's up and we've eaten up some miles so we got the tent down and got set on the trail again and it wasn't long before we were back in the snow but at least it wasn't raining at this point. Down at the shore there wasn't much snow but it was only maybe 20 metres, 30 metres up the hill and the snow line was reached. It made it quite nice to, to see in the, the dark but you had to watch your footing again. Well, hopefully you can see me. We've, uh Come, what, about 45 minutes to the campsite? Yeah, that's about that. It's, uh, it's dry now, uh, the, the, the rain hasn't come on yet, but it's forecast to come on later on. So we stopped here and get a nice view across the loch, it's beautiful, the hills are white. Uh, it's thawing a wee bit, isn't it? Yeah, so it's getting a little bit milder, but I'm just hoping it stays as dry as long as possible. Yeah. yeah before the rain does <laughs> decide to come in. There is at least one day where it's going to be... Terrible. <laughs> howling. Right, yeah. anyway. Shall we get cracked on up, yeah, up the wall? Yeah. Lovely spot though. Uh, 
Another good thing about today is the ground is starting to thaw out. It's getting a wee bit easier than yesterday. The slightly milder temperatures had thawed out some of the snow but it just made it into a slushy mess until we got a bit higher up. Anyway, on we went past Rower Denon and started to get further north up Loch Lomond. Oh, I was going to have a wee break here, it's 11 o'clock. We've still got about 8 kilometres, maybe more to Inversnaid. We've taken the top road, which takes us up to about 150 metres, but raised on them both before, and this is certainly... The lower one might seem easier, but you're up and down and big steps, so... We're here, so we stop, we bite to eat before cracking on. Clouds building, it's pretty threatening, but um, we're going to keep going. I just hope that rain stays away. Ugh. Oh, time to go. Oh my god. <laughs> back home with the heavy pack. This is the worst part. Stopping the starting, or starting once you've stopped. Oh. Onwards we go. It's going to be down to Kailness, but uh, nothing's easy. Even in the summer, this is. It's hard work with the big backpacks on. They're a bit heavier now with the winter gear. But we just need to stop moaning and get on with it. It's down the hill now till Kale Ness. We've uh, been over there before actually in some of the videos where I've kayaked over with Jerry and we did Ben Lomond from that side. We're not sure if the Inversnade Hotel's open but we've still got a fair, fair few miles to get under the, the belt. So we'll crack on. And we'll see how far we get before this rain or potentially snow starts this afternoon. Let's go. The forecast was for a warm front to come in this afternoon and to be preceded by snow before turning back to rain. It certainly felt like that. The, the skies were heavy and it looked like it was going to chuck it down at any minute. Anyway, on we went. And the snow did seem to be getting deeper and deeper. Well, there's my feet down yonder. You can see we're in a wee clearing. Oh, I tell you, we're having a wee rest because we just popped to a high spot. There's Ray behind me. <laughs> and it was about, I don't know, 15 centimetres of slushy snow up a, I wouldn't say a steep hill, but up a hill where it required a bit of effort, so we're just stopping here. Oh, catch our breath, and um, still not at Kiel Mesh yet. <laughs> so, progress is slow because of the thawing snow. Uh, yesterday it was the ice, but it's... Uh, it's thawing here, but uh, yeah, nice wee shelter spot here in, in amongst the conifers, so I'll shut up now. It's going to take me some effort to get out with this big pack pack on now that I've sat down. Ah, oh, man. The joys. Right. Oh. Right, the rain's kind of started. A wee bit, just sleety rain. But it's lunchtime, so we've dropped down to this wee bay here. Oh, there's another wee robin. Lots of robins. <laughs> Beautiful wee birds. Anyway, yeah, we've dropped down to this wee bay. We're going to get a brew on, rehydrate, maybe a wee scotch egg. So we are feeling pretty pooped. Right, let's do it. Oh my god. It's getting a wee bit lighter. Well, we've had a, a bite to eat out of coffee and a scotch egg. I feel a bit better for that, actually. And, uh, I'm going to get cracked on. It's probably about one o'clock, so we've only got maybe three hours of daylight left. We'll definitely be walking in the dark. It's going to be a hard push. The um, the distance we've, we've got to do today, or hoping to do today, isn't as much as yesterday, but the terrain's a bit more up and down under normal conditions. Yeah. The snow, when we were up in the higher route, was uh, a slowing factor, but hopefully now that we're down, We'll just barry on along the track and see if we can get to Ben Glass before, uh, well, before tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to say before nightfall, but that's not going to happen. We'll definitely be walking in the, in the dark, but yeah, the sleet is on, this this rain's moving in, this is the, the mild air actually moving in. It's kind of sleet here, you can see further up it's definitely snow, so yeah, we'll get warmed up again when we move. 
maybe tomorrow we'll, we'll wait up to a wee bit of warmer, uh, warmer temperatures. But yeah, I'm going to put the big camera away now so it'll be action cam for the next wee while and I'll report back further along the trail and hopefully further up towards the north end of Loch Lomond. Right, let's go. Badger, thought they were nocturnal. <laughs> he wasn't expecting to see us, that's for sure. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Ray's, the Murray's Wildlife Program. And down here, we've got a goat. <clears throat> right, goatee. Yeah, fella. <sighs> He's got bigger horns than me, so. I wouldn't like meeting that in the middle of the night, would you? <laughs> anyway, here's the uh, boathouse. I'll tell you a wee story here. Yeah. Oh, so here we are at the boathouse. Just along from the Inversnade Hotel and as I said the last time I was here, I was with Jerry. I'll tell you a wee story about that. Ooh, look at that view. Isn't that stunning? Over my shoulder, that's to uh, the, uh, part of the Arrowcar Alps. Ben Vane, Acroy, and uh, well, Ben Vorlich's on the right. Anyway, the last time I was here, uh, I was here with Jerry, and we'd, I think the weather was pretty manky, pretty similar to today. And we decided we're not going to the mountains, we'll, we'll do a wee cycle, and we cycled from Loch Catron all the way over, I think it's Loch Arclet, down to the Inversnade Hotel, which we've just passed. And we were coming here, this is the furthest away point, and we had a bite to eat and a coffee here. And uh, we got back up to the Inversnade, or I was at the Inversnade anyway, I Jenny was nowhere to be seen. The furthest point away from home and he got a puncture. It was a bit of a nightmare at that point, but yeah, fair dues, the puncture repair certainly worked till we got back. Back to the cars at Loch Catron. Anyway, doing a slightly different activity today. It's going to be dark in about an hour, I think we've got three or four hours. Walking with the head torches on, but uh, anyway, lovely. Let's crack on. I'll report back later. The section between Inversnade and up to Ben Glass was a bit that I knew would be really tough, and it, it proved to be so. Uh, even without the snow and the ice, there's lots of ups and downs along the shore of Loch Lomond. And it did seem to be that the snow level was getting deeper and deeper, just over a, a couple of kilometres really. Certainly from the south of the loch to where we were now, there was there was more and more snow. Anyway, on we trudged and it soon became dark. Sunsets round about half past three, uh, if not before at this time of year. And we soon had the head torches on and picking our way along the the path which takes you along the shores of Loch Lomond. And again, there were still sections which had slushy snow or hard-packed ice on them as we headed along, so we weren't making fast progress. As time marched on and the further up the loch we got, as I mentioned before, the snow was getting deeper and deeper and we just hit a point where it seemed to go from I don't know 10 centimetres to about a foot of snow and it made it really hard going and we were slowed right down. Ben Glass campsite was not going to be reached tonight and when we came across Dune by our Bothy there was only one thing for it, we were going to spend the night here. What a lifesaver this place is. Thanks to the mountain, both the association for this one for sure. A fantastic, fantastic place to stay the night.
Well, good evening everyone. We can see we're not in our tents tonight. We raised done a good job, the fire's going. Fact, we're doing alright there. Eh? Uh, just, 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 yeah. Just managed to because we, we weren't expecting to stay here, but it got dark. Well, it was four o'clock dark and that last bit along the lock. Well we're still on the side of the lock, but um, it was taking our time. I think what we'd usually take us fifteen minutes was taking us maybe forty, forty five. Yeah. It was just the ice and the snow and the tree roots and you're constantly watching for your footing to make sure you don't go skating into the into the water. There was some deep drop. Yeah, there was some, some, deep, yeah deep. some serious drops here and there, so you've got to be careful. Uh, yeah. This is en route to Bengalas campsite, so yeah, it's stop here. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the thing is, once we came out of the forest, the, the, the snow out there must be half a foot deep, maybe? Yeah. yeah. And it's thawing rapidly, so it was um, it was tough going. So when we saw this place, my God, we just decided to to come in. So we're going to stay here tonight, and then will we get up early to, early early tomorrow? I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the thaw, the thaw. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Have a look and uh, head out. But the forecast for tomorrow was horrendous. Uh, <laughs> the last time I looked, it, and there was a, a super thaw, and so which might actually work in our favour, but. I think as you, what you were saying from doing it before, once we get to sort of Ben Glass, it's, it's a sort of Land Rover track. Yeah, it's, it's a track most of the way, so it's a lot easier. This is the worst section. The Loch Lomond bit is the worst out of no. the whole thing, I think, in my opinion. No. It's just that constant up and down, up and down. It just drains you, something no. terrible. I mean, it's dark and it's raining yeah. and the wind's howling. Yeah, because yeah, the wind at times, it was wild. It was for, for a few minutes. Yeah, well, yeah, for a, for a few could, minutes, it come on, and it was like, here we go. You could hear it coming, couldn't you? Yeah. yeah you could hear it coming, so. yeah. Anyway, right. Yeah. We'll report back in the morning. We'll uh, hit the hay, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can we can make some uh, progress. Yeah, and this fire will stay on as well. <laughs> Is it going? Yeah, going yeah. I tell you what, let's let's take our chairs over and sit around the fire. I think yeah. that's. That's, what, that's a good idea. Just now. I've, got, well, my, I've got my whole water bottle anyway, so. You could, yeah. I've still to make mine. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we'll see you in the morning. We're going to warm our hands next to the fire. But all hats off today for getting that fire going. I don't know how he did it, but he did it and we settled down for the night, knowing that we were going to have to make up some ground tomorrow if we were going to get back on track for completing the West Highland Way in five days. Folks, I'm going to turn my light off. It's uh, probably just back at six now. Alarms went off just before six. Um, it was cold when we got out of our sleeping bags, but now it's. Yeah, you see our breaths, but I think it's to be milder today. It's to be manky today. In fact, it's raining outside already, so I think um, there's a big thaw in as well. It's going to be a big day again, Ray. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to put the big camera away and then uh, when we head out, because yeah, I don't want to get it soaked and broken. so Yep, time for my coffee, and uh, yeah, maybe report back later on, once we're on the trail. The other issue we've got is there's still quite a lot of lying snow, so if try to find the path underneath it's going to be an issue. And there's lots of bogs and big wet patches now, whereas before the ground was frozen. So we had our breakfast and then gave the both of you a quick sweep up and a clean, leaving it nice and tidy for the next visitors. And what a fantastic location for us anyway. I really didn't fancy spending the night out there in the soggy snow and in a soggy tent. Out on the trail and the weather was, well, as forecast, it was hammering it down, although you can't really tell that from this footage. And the snow didn't seem to be melting that much. 
Anyway, our intended route for today was to go from the Dunbothy and try and get all the way up to Bridge of Orkey, which would have us well placed for the for day three. Right, we've uh, reached. It's Ben Glassy. Ben Glass. This is where we were hoping to camp. Uh, there's still about. I, I reckon there's about 15 centimetres, 10, 15 centimetres of snow at the moment. And that's it wet, so uh, there'll be more when it fell. We've probably been going for about an hour and a half, two hours. It's going to be a tough pull to get to Bridge Orkey today, but we'll give it a bash. It's just raining, I'm soaked through. Um, well, my bottom, my legs are soaked. I'm just going to have to be resigned to that now. <laughs> yeah. Keep our stuff up our legs. <laughs> We're smiling. Uh-huh. We're smiling. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Oh my. Well, it's just tough going. We've uh, just stopped to get a wee drink of water. There's a wee stream down there. And uh, yeah. The snow's just getting deeper and deeper. I'd say it's more than a foot in places. Uh, it's not melting as quickly as we were hoping. So, uh, Bridge of Orkey seems a long, long way off. I'd be very surprised if we make it that far. So we're going to assess our options when we can get uh, out of the rain. There's an underpass in a couple of kilometres which will probably take us a couple of, a couple of hours to get to. It's slow going, so uh, yeah, I'll report back then. We were really hoping that this section of the trail would have melted or the snow would have melted so we would be walking on a nice path but as you can see that certainly wasn't the case and the river levels and the burn levels were rising. The ground underneath the snow was soggy and wet and we were losing our footing through it. It was horrendous. It's hard. I knew today was going to be the hard day because of the rain but yeah it's just such a slog. My muscles and all the aches I had in day one, like the sore shoulders and legs, not as bad actually. I think in a multi-day trek, sometimes the first day can be the worst in terms of that, but yeah, look at this. It's not that I'm worried about, it's all the stuff like that. That potholing through the snow, it's quite tough going, so. Alright, we'll see how we go on. Soaked as well. This is tough. In addition to the hard work through the foot high slush and being soaked to the bone, the river levels and burn levels were now actually getting dangerously high. It was almost spilling over onto the path in places. It wasn't looking, yeah, it wasn't looking very good if I'm being honest with you at this point. And I wasn't feeling very good either. I've had better days, let's just put it that way. At this point we thought if we can get to Tyndrum and maybe book a hotel or a lodge to dry out we'd, we'd be alright. But things were slow. We definitely weren't getting to Bridge of Orkey and now it was looking as if though time drum was going to be a push to, to get to before midnight. Now we're going to have to have a serious look at this, right? Yeah. Now we're going to have a serious look at this. We're only halfway to time drum. We're leaving halfway to time drum from where we left this morning. Oh. We're, um, ah, we're no we're about a third of the way to time from, from, well from Ben Glass anyway. We're we'll leaving to a third of the corner. What time's up? Half past twelve. Steam coming off you. The steam. <laughs> We've taken shelter and about the only, well it's not even shelter here, it's still dripping down. This tiny wee underpass which you can't even stand up and put a raise bent double. But you know what, we're, we're calling it, this is the snowpack is still, it's getting deeper and deeper actually, it's up to my knees in places and um, it's going to be worse when we go up over Vanish Moor. I, I kind of thought it might have melted, there was maybe this turbo thaw but it's not so 
yeah, we're going to bail and we're going to go and get the train, hopefully from Crean Larrick, so it's the way it goes, we'll explain more and reasonings behind it, but uh, me keep moving so I'm getting cold again actually, yeah, it's getting cold, cold. Anyway, right, we'll report back. Whoa. Right, we've referred to the road, oh my god, it's so nice to be, I didn't think I'd ever say this. Walking on tarmac. <laughs> At least we're getting somewhere. Right, still miserable though. Let's see if we can catch a train in Green Larrick. So although it was absolutely miserable, the the fact that we could actually walk in something that wasn't about a foot deep slushy snow was quite nice. The rain was still pelting down. It was quite windy. And there was a train at 1.37 and I thought we'd, if we could get there in just under an hour we'd catch the train. So we belted down this uh, road and we had to jump off every now and again into this drifts of snow where the snow plough pushed the snow up and we got to the train station only to find the train well it said on this notice here you can see it said it was terminating here and it had been cancelled due to uh, adverse incidents down the line so at this point I called a friend A train, which we've been slow on the road to get, is it time to cancel? We've got a, a backup, there's a legend coming to bail us out. Oh, I feel like we <laughs> Just when we thought things couldn't get any worse, the train actually al arrived. It was delayed, and the conductor told us that the person had put the wrong message up. And anyway, we jumped onto it. I thought that was it, we were going to be nice and cosy and heading back down to Glasgow to, to head home. That wasn't going to be the case, there was more drama to come. So after a very slow journey we only got two stops down Loch Lomond and the train was sat for about an hour. It turns out the line was flooded and landslips had been occurring. It just, yeah, the weather wasn't only affecting us. So anyway, that legend came to collect us and thank God for that. I owe him a big favour, that's for sure. Anyway, a few hours later and we were arriving back in Glasgow. Right, the last time you saw me was in the train. God, it's cold. Somebody came to the rescue. <laughs> oh, it's chicken. Very typical. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Jerry. You're right. a lifesaver. Thank See you later. later. God, I'm shaking. Right, you're probably cut to me in the office now, but <laughs> I am seriously cold. Yes. Yeah. Alright, we've got everything. All right. Cheers, Jerry. Thank you. Sorry, you were going to say? Yes, it was, uh, yeah. Time to, time to leave the trail and call it quits. I'm shaking now, I'm cold. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm shaking, look at that. <laughs> right, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Right, well, I'm back in the office. As you can see, it's now two days since we bailed, I suppose, from the West Highland Way. Uh, but before I go any further, I just I, I have to thank Jerry for coming and getting us, because we could have been in that train for hours. Uh, it just shows you how exceptional the um, weather conditions were on that particular day. It was it was pretty horrendous. That train was uh, was cancelled due to flooding further down the line, and there was landslips here, there, and everywhere. So thank you very much, Jerry. I'll you a pint. Anyway, so I thought I'd do a quick synopsis of what happened. Um, I thought I'd start with that last day and just just how tough it was and why we decided to take the decision we did. Uh, well, when we got to Ben Glass, we thought that the path... Well, we knew the path was better. Um, Ray, who's done the West Highland Way two or three times before, knows that the path on there widens. And we thought at that point with this turbo thaw that the snow might have melted enough that we'd start to see the track and we'd make some speedy progress. As you saw, that didn't happen. The snow depths were still, they were, they were exceptional. It, you know, it was quite localised as well, because further down the loch, even at Inversnaid, for instance, there was nowhere near as much snow. It was literally about a kilometre before we hit the Bothy that we slowed right up because the snow was, yeah, it was, it was deep, you know, <laughs> and it was getting wet. Um, it wasn't nice, soft, powdery snow. That wouldn't have been an issue. That would have been, you know, I think I don't think that would have hindered our progress as much as the uh, the slushy, heavy snow. Uh, so that was that, and that that you know we, that bothy was fantastic. That was just in the right place. There was no way we would. We, well, we could have got to Bengalas, but it would have been another two or three hours at night getting down there and trying to pitch 
in soggy snow, not knowing what's underneath the snow would have been a nightmare. So we um, we set off in the morning from the Bothy in high po hopes of getting down to where we'd intended to camp and that from there we'd be able to bash on and get up to the Bridge of Orkey. It soon became apparent that that wasn't going to be the case. The turbo thaw wasn't, didn't happen. It was milder and it was chucking it down with rain, but it wasn't the double digits, not certainly where we were uh, on that day. Uh, the snowpack wasn't melting very quickly. Added to that, the amount of rain that was coming down and, and the snow melt, although it wasn't, <laughs> it didn't seem to be melting much snow, it was, you know, the river levels were dangerously high. There was points that River Falloch was close to coming up and over sections of the West Highland Way and any burns that we were crossing without bridges. Uh, in fact, I, I tell you what happened, that day, so our day three, the section of the West Highland Way we'd done before up the side of Loch Lomond was actually impassable. There was a, a tweet from the official West Highland Way um, page saying that the boundary bridge, bridge was impassable. I don't know if it was washed away, I don't think it was, I think it was just the volume of water uh, coming over the waterfall must have been right over the bridge, which shows you how exceptional the, the conditions were. So. Um, the options we had, we, as I said, we thought about getting to Tyndrum and booking somewhere like a hotel or a lodge to dry out the clothes, but once we got to the underpass and, and I looked at how far we'd got, we wouldn't have been getting to Tyndrum till well after dark. I mean, I, you're talking 10, 11 at night. The next option would be to have stayed at somewhere, somewhere in Creel and Larrick, but by that time we would have been pushing it. We would, we would have had to add at least, I think, two days on to or designated five that we were hoping to do it in. And you know what, my wife wanted to be back for Christmas. <laughs> so that wasn't an option. I think, I feel good, I feel I feel proud that we, we made that decision. You know, sometimes when, when you're with somebody else, bravado can take over and you just want to push on, but you know, we assessed it, we called it right, 100% called it right. Um, I don't, I don't, um, I don't see how we could have done anything else apart from adding two or three days on to the journey and, and taking time out of Korean Larry. I mean, the snow depths were, were crazy. Um, interestingly, when, when we got on the train, I did get an internet signal and I checked the Traffic Scotland webcams and Time Drum looked just as bad as Korean Larry. But interestingly, the Glencoe at Alton the Fay webcam, the turbo thaw had happened there. There was no snow at the side of the road. So it just shows you, um, usually it's Rannick Moor and Glencoe, which are a bit higher up, where there's, you know, you expect to hit more sort of wintry weather, but um, yeah, it, it, it wasn't to be. So, um, yeah, so we had all the kit, you know, we, the other option we had is we could have just stopped, got the tents up. We had, my all my kit was in dry bags within my rucksack. And, and, and within the bag, there was one big dry bag and then little dry bags with everything. So we did have dry clothes that we could have changed into if we'd pitched the tents, got up and, and dried out. But um, most of the clothes that I had on that day were pretty wet. The snowpack was deep and soft, but the ground underneath, you couldn't see it. And sometimes that thawed and you're putting your foot down off trail into big wet bogs. And my feet were soaking, the, the water had gone up over the gators. Uh, my internal gaiters and my feet were soaking, my legs were soaking, my torso was, was dry, the the bag and my waterproof jacket was worked, but you know, was was fine. But um yeah, hypothermia could have been an issue, getting washed away in the rivers could be could have been an issue. So the West Island Way it is seen as an entry level, uh, long distance path and I, and I guess it is. It's a you know, normal conditions, it's a beautiful, beautiful path to follow, you know, if if you're doing it in you know, when there's not a foot of snow to <laughs> to go through. Um, so it just shows you, it's like anything else, like I always say with the hills and the mountains, you know, there's you know, some some people say there's no such thing as hill walking in winter conditions in Scotland, it's mountaineering and it and I suppose the same goes for any sort of through hike you're doing, it's, it's, it's dependent on the weather conditions. So there we go, that's it. Whether we go back to do it, to finish it off, I don't know. I've never been that bothered about it, to be honest with you. It's always been something which I've thought was maybe like, too popular, not popular, but I like my solitude, do you know what I mean? Um, funnily enough, we didn't meet another soul. <laughs> I think we met one person, uh, we saw one person um, at one point, but uh, yeah, it was it was quiet. Um, anyway, right, let's have a look at the stats. Uh, I'll bring them up on the computer and I'll put them up on the screen there. So just to show you what we did, um, day 
uh, day one, which was from Mulgai to um, Salaki campsite was twen nearly 23 miles uh, and it says it's 9 hours 40, it took us a lot longer because of the ice I mean literally the whole way up the path was, was iced up you couldn't get into a stride at all so I think we did really well to do that distance on day 1 day 2 we did it less 13.7 but that we always expected to do that. that I think under normal conditions that's the hardest part Ray certainly thinks it is of the trail is the ups and downs and the tree roots and the rocks on the side of uh, Loch Lomond and then on day 3 when we bailed it was still just under 10 miles like 9.2 miles up to Crean Larrick and the quickest we the quickest section was that last four kilometres along the wet road, dodging cars and <laughs> because there was no space, because of the, the piles of snow, there was literally a metre, metre and a half in places where the snow had been piled up from the snow plough. So there was just enough room on the road for the cars and lorries and buses and gritters that were going past. So every time we saw a car coming, we had to jump off up to our thighs <laughs> in the snow, um, which, was, uh, which was, yeah, a bit frustrating, but you know what? It was still better than the uh, than the alternative. So yeah, uh, in total, uh, it was just under fifty miles that we covered, uh, which again in those conditions is isn't too isn't too shabby. And what an adventure it was! It was a proper adventure. It, it pushed. It did push our our limits. We we, we, we called it at the right time. Uh, wasn't you know we didn't do anything stupid. Had all the gear. Uh, I'll remember this one. That's for sure. So anyway, I'm going to shop now. Thank you very much for watching if you've made it this far and yeah, disclaimer, just any time you go out in Scotland, even if it's something which is meant to be easy, check the conditions, you know, don't take any, you know, be, be cautious, hope for the best, plan for the worst and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching, stay safe out there and I'll see you on the next adventure.